Welcome back in our journey through Proverbs. We are in Proverbs chapter 12 today. And the word that uh, I am taking home with me um, from Proverbs chapter 12 is speech. Uh, it's kind of the overarching theme of Proverbs chapter 12. Um, y- you could actually say that pretty much every one of the 31 chapters of, of Proverbs has something to do with the way we speak has something to do with our words. And here's why. Jesus really helps to define this in Luke 6, 45, when he says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, here's the truth about our words. You can tell what's in a person's heart by the words that are coming out of their mouth. Um, most people don't have control over their mouth very, very well. They don't have a good control over their tongue. Uh, The book of James talks a little bit more about this in the New Testament, but um, consider what a great forest is lit on fire by a small spark. That's our tongue. Or what rudder will shift a gigantic ship. Um, That's our tongue. How much trouble have your words and my words gotten us into? Uh, Because we weren't cautious about our words or paying attention to what was coming out of our mouth and then recognizing that there was something going on in our heart by what was coming out of our mouth. Now, the challenge of the whole of wisdom and its influence is that I would experience transformation on a heart level so that my words don't create havoc for my life. Now, our words have the ability to bring life or to bring death. They can be a sword that harms people, or they can be a scalpel that heals people. Now, throughout chapter 12, there are some phrases that specifically identify figures of speech, like advice, words, speech, talk, sinful talk, fruit of our lips, uh, the truthful witness, the testimony, lies, insults, reckless words, truthful lips, lying tongues, things that we blurt out, and kind words. These are all expressions of speech. But there's also a reference to the content of the speech that are not directly associated with phrases that we would define by words. So that didn't come out right. By words that we define. Um, And so verse 9, verse 11, and verse 23 um, are these verses. Verse 9 talks about it's the person who pretends to be someone else. Verse 11 is the person who chases fantasies, lacks judgment. And verse 23 is the person of wisdom keeps their knowledge to themselves. Now, in each of these verses, there's an implication of character, a character attribute that, we rec- that is recognized by what we speak. The words we speak have an impact. You can tell who is pretending to be somebody by the stories they tell. You can tell who's chasing fantasies by the way they talk about the next big score. And you can tell who needs to share all of their knowledge all at once, all the time. Um, Usually those are things that help cover up what's going on in our heart. But really what it does is it exposes the content of our heart. Our words have the ability to build trust and to build suspicion. I, I would prefer to be a person who builds trust by the words that come out of my mouth. The Bible tells us to let our yes be yes and our no be no. Let me say it again. The Bible tells us to let our yes be yes and our no be no. And what does that mean? That means that our words have the capacity to create ambiguity or clarity. Ambiguity or clarity. Now, there are some people who really, really strive to uh, uh, use their words to build ambiguity, to keep people off center or to keep people offset. That's not the biblical pattern of wisdom. That's not the biblical pattern of speech. Clarity. Being clear. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Now, I have stopped completely using the word maybe in my vocabulary. And here's why. Maybe produces way too much ambiguity. It produces some confusion. It produces a place where the devil can start to disappoint and discourage people when we use the word maybe. Perhaps your child comes to you or your spouse comes to you and asks you if, we can, if you can do something or if they can do something or if you can participate with them in something. Or at work, somebody asks for your help and the next phrase out of your mouth is maybe. 
What did you just say? Did you say yes? Or did you say no? If the answer is, I don't know, then say, I don't know. I have to check. If the answer is, I'm too afraid to say no, then you need to check the content of your heart. There's something going on inside where you're afraid to say no. If you're the person who says yes and you have no intention of doing it, you are now losing trust with the people that you love and that you care for and that you work with. So in the course of our lives, it's incredibly important to listen to the words that are coming out of our mouths, to be clear and to be direct, to let our yes be yes and our no be no, to not be ambiguous and to not use maybe, because Because maybe maybe is is the devil's devil's playground. playground. I want to encourage you today, think about what's coming out of your mouth. Listen to your words. Listen to the things that are coming out so that you can recognize what's going on in your heart. Listen to other people. Listen to your spouse. Listen to your kids. Listen to your coworkers. You can recognize a lot that's going on in their life by recognizing what's coming out of their mouth. God bless you. Have a great day. Speech. Watch your words.